Hey, what's up everyone? Craig here. Today we are in my tiny tropical styled garden. It's the middle of summer and all of the plants are thriving. The tall plants are way up and above head height, but that's not what we're looking at today. Today's video is focusing on shade loving plants and a list of plants that you can grow in those shady conditions in your garden. I'm gonna be focusing on things like begonias and ferns and some much more unusual and rare exotic plants that you can grow either in a tropical style garden or any other style of garden. These are just great plants that really do well in shady garden conditions. So this border is a very, very narrow border in my small tropical style garden. It gets a tiny bit of morning sun early in the year, but as everything else has grown up, it's cast in shade throughout the whole day. It's backed by a garden fence, which casts shadow all afternoon. So all of the plants that grow in this border have to be shade loving plants. And don't think you're limited. If your garden or if an area in your garden is under the cover of shade, because there are so many interesting plants that you can grow. So let's have a look at some of these in more detail. First up is this grass-like perennial that I grow as an edge across this whole border. It's a beautiful golden variegated leaf plant called Acorus gramineus, and this is a cultivar called Ogon. Now this started life as one clump and over the past three or four years, I've been dividing it and spreading it across this border and it makes a really attractive edging plant. And because it's evergreen, when some of the herbaceous plants like the Brunera and my begonias, when they die away, this grass maintains interest and structure all the way across the border. Um, I really like it as well because the narrow leaves contrast really nicely against the broad open leaves that so many other shade loving plants have and for me it's the contrast in leaf structure that is making this border so interesting this year now over the past few years i've really struggled to combine shade loving plants in a way that i was happy with in this border but this year i think it's the closest i've got to getting it right for me remember Gardening is all about growing a space that you enjoy and it has to be unique to you. So this might not be everybody's cup of tea, but I'm going to show you what I've got growing in my space. Now down here is a very, very nice foliage plant that also has tiny, beautiful flowers that are just starting to go over. Now this has the common name of strawberry begonia, but it's not a begonia at all. This is a saxifraga, or saxifrage, however you want to pronounce it. You can see, because of the colour on the leaves, why it gets the common name of strawberry begonia. It has these lovely mottled surfaces with this pinky red underside. And this plant, some people call mother of thousands, which I know is a very frequently used common name because it sends off these stolons which spread and form a colony. So it's only been in the ground here for a year and it's already establishing itself. So I'm hoping this will make a fantastic ground cover plant. Now you see this shade loving perennial more often sold as a house plant, but if you're gardening in a zone similar to mine, so that's zone 9b and upwards it proves completely hardy and these leaves look like the sort of things that will get frosted off um, but they are actually surprisingly resilient they're thicker than they look and tougher than they look so i would definitely give this a go just beside that is an impatiens now this impatiens isn't grown primarily for its flowers it does have nice flowers um, but they are insignificant in my opinion compared to the foliage. They're just small creamy white flowers about this size. Whereas the foliage has this lovely pink midrib. And again, almost a metallic underside. This is Impatiens omiana and a cultivar called Pink Nerves, I think. 
Um, and again, this has only been in this spot this season. And for a shade loving plant, it's already starting to colonize. Um, I don't think it's going to be particularly invasive, but it's a really nice leaf color, leaf shape and a contrast for this area. So the combination is already looking good. Now at the back here is a begonia, one of my favorite genus of plants. This begonia is begonia grandis, and you get a lot of different subspecies, varieties and cultivars of begonia grandis. And that's probably because it's one of the few completely hardy begonias that you can grow. In winter, this beautiful foliage dies back to underground corms, tiny little, almost pea-sized corms that will get bigger over time. And they actually produce corms up the stem later in summer, which is how this plant reproduces and again will form a colony that will fill this area. Now, this is another lovely plant with a green leaf surface and a red underside. And I really like the way the veins look on the underside of the leaf. And in late summer, Begonia grandis produces um, small clusters of flowers. Now this one has white flowers, um, but you can get cultivars like a Begonia grandis herons pirouette that has pink flowers. And they just really look like they're glowing when they're in bloom because they thrive in these shady spots. And it's nice to have this bright flower just drawing your eye. Again, this is Begonia grandis. It's a fantastic shade loving plant. Now, a logical one to follow on from is this. This is Begonia torsa. Now, Begonia torsa is a hybrid of Begonia grandis and another that I can't remember off the top of my head. This giant, so I would call this leaf still a baby. They will get to two or three times this size has all of the hardiness of Begonia grandis, which is why it is such an exciting hybrid. Now this is the first time I've successfully grown this in my garden. And I've grown it from dormant corms um, that I purchased and planted in winter. And I bought three of these, so I'm hoping to propagate some. And this will do the same thing. It will produce corms or little bulbils all the way up the stems at the nodes by late summer. This one might not do it, because it's in its first year, but you can see how thick that stem is starting to get. Now you can see I'm growing this in a pot. Um, this is because I'm gonna use this as a stock plant for propagation, so I didn't want it planted out. And that pot has good drainage. Now my garden has clay soil. So any plants that need good drainage, like um, fibrous or tender, uh, fleshy rooted begonias, need that drainage. So I'll grow them in a pot because clay soil just doesn't provide the drainage that they need. Now another begonia I've got growing, which is very popular amongst tropical star gardeners, is this. This is sometimes called the palm-leafed begonia. This is Begonia luxuriance, and it is such a fantastic leaf for a shady area in your garden. Unlike Begonia grandis and Begonia torsa, Begonia luxuriance is tender, so this is going to need protecting in the winter. Now this stunning shade loving plant is a cane type begonia. So unlike these two, this one is going to grow up tall on bamboo like canes. And these ones are actually quite attractive. They are red, slightly furry canes. And this one is creeping up underneath the leaves of my banana. So it's getting some good height onto it. Now I've seen these reach almost two meters tall, so they can be really, really architectural shade loving plants. Um, but I have to say it copes best in partial shade. Um, I'd say that for most of the begonias, partial shade seems to be best for them. Um, something cool happens with the broader leaved begonias. They sort of develop a silvery sheen when the sun is directly on them and I think that's a bit of an adaption to kind of refract some of that light away to stop it damaging the leaf. I've tried to catch it on camera so many times and it evades me. The lens on the camera doesn't seem to capture it. But yeah, partial shade is um, ideal for begonia luxuriance. Now, one that's probably been catching your eye down the front here is this. 
This is Brunnera, and this is a cultivar called Silver Heart. Now, I wasn't a fan of Brunnera at all when I first saw them growing. They, yes, they have nice foliage, and in spring they put out masses of these tiny blue flowers. Um, but I thought they were a bit dull. But over time, I saw how valuable they were at adding this beautiful pattern and leaf shape into a shady border. And what is great about these compared to hostas, which you won't see planted in this border, is the slugs seem to leave Brunnera alone. At least they are much less drawn to it than they are hostas. So I don't actually grow any hostas in my garden because they've just been obliterated by slugs. And where I don't like to use slug pellets, I'm finding much more slug resistant plants. Yeah, Brunnera. You can get a lot of different cultivars and there's a really nice one called Alexander's Great, which gets enormous foliage. And this is completely hardy. So it's herbaceous, it will die back in winter and then reshoot in spring with loads and loads of beautiful leaves, spires of these tiny blue flowers um, that look a bit like forget-me-not. And it, if it's happy, it will self-seed around, which is great. I love plants that spread themselves. Let's shuffle along a bit. I'm doing this on my hands and knees, so if you hear grunting, that's why. At the front here, we've got a small fern. Now, this is sometimes called the Australian jungle brake fern. Um, its Latin name is Teres umbrosa, and this has been really popular in my online shop. Now, I'd call this plant borderline hardy. It does get frosted, and it goes brown and scruffy, but you can cut back the stems, and this one's growing in a pot, just to ground level, and in spring they will reshoot. Now this can get to a really good size. Um, I'm actually going to plant this one out, but I'm just sitting it in a spot just to try out layouts at the moment. The leaves will, well, I'll show you pictures of a more mature one. It's a really, really nice fern. And um, if you've got a milder garden, it can actually be evergreen. So just experiment and see if it's something that you want to plant in your garden. Behind that is another Impatiens. This one is Impatiens omiana, like the first one we saw. But this is a cultivar called White Lightning, I think. And again, the flowers are insignificant on this. This is more grown as a foliage plant. And I really liked having that silver streak that's going through the leaf next to the silver foliage of the Brunera. It's a combination that I'm really pleased with. Um, this will spread and form a nice colony um, it dies back in winter and reshoots again in spring. Sometimes you see these get completely cooked in the heat of summer, but because this border gets so much shade, the impatiens are thriving. Now there's a really interesting leaf just behind that and that. This is Salaginella, which to me looks like a cross between moss and a fern. Salaginella is a really prehistoric plant and I grow it as a terrarium plant, but I've also got these two, which are Krausiana cultivars. Salaginella spreads really, really easily, and I haven't actually tested the hardiness of this in my garden. So this is growing in a pot which moves into the greenhouse over winter, and I just keep it at a temperature of about five degrees just to keep frost off it. But it's a really nice texture at the back of the border. Now behind that, you can see my ferns. Now these are Blechnum ferns, which are fantastic and they look really, really Jurassic with their stiff leaves that are unlike so many other ferns that you see more commonly available. Now these three are growing in pots just to maintain height. Because as I say, I always struggle to get this border right. So a lot of what you're seeing isn't in its final place yet because I'm playing with the layout, seeing how it's going to look through the season. And then once I'm happy with the planting in this shady border, then I will put the plants into the ground. Now this leaf, which I really like, is an Argoranthemum. Argoranthemum by Pinartifida, I think it's called. And this has amazing daisy-like flowers, really early in the year when so many plants in our tropical style gardens just aren't flowering yet. But I'm growing this because I love the foliage just as much as I love the flowers. It's like an Argoranthemum on steroids. It's that serrated leaf. They are evergreen for me in zone 9b. 
and they grow happily and flower profusely in shade, which it can be hard to find shrubs that will flower as well in shade as they do with a little bit more sunlight. This one was a tiny cutting, so you can see how happily it's growing and it's starting to spill through the trunk of the laurel here. So again, a nice mix of textures. We've got broad leaves, palm leaves, serrated leaves, and these cool leaves. This beauty is a plant called Farfugium japonicum oreomaculatum. And the oreomaculatum to me speaks about the star markings on the leaves. It almost looks like someone's flicked bleach over the leaf. It's absolutely gorgeous. But unfortunately, as with hostas, the slugs and snails absolutely love these. But this one is quite a quick growing plant. So as fast as the slugs are destroying older leaves, it's pushing out new ones. So it's okay. And the new leaves are absolutely stunning. This plant is amazing because it is completely hardy and it will hold these golden leaves or golden splodged leaves all winter long. So you get really, really unusual winter interest. And for me, the combination of this Oreo maculatum with the variegated the chorus is a really nice combo. Um, I actually had these paired up in the first year I created this border and it was the bit I liked most. And then I broke them up and this year I've reunited them and I think it looks really, really good. Right, here is a tiny little Milano Salinum decipens, which is the giant black cow parsley. Now this is only a seedling, which is in a pot because these can get enormous, and I've shown them on the channel before, but as a shade-loving, borderline hardy biennial, which means they'll flower in their second year and then die, it's a really nice foliage plant, and it's not looking much at the moment, it almost looks like ground elder, but I will show you some mature ones, and the flowers are absolutely loved by pollinators. So I'm keeping hold of this one in a pot, um, admittedly it needs a bigger pot than what it's in and either when I've got space or if I can find someone who'll grow it for me that has space we will plant it out. Now something I like to do in a tropical style garden is move tender plants outdoors for the warmer summer months and this begonia is completely tender it has taken five degrees celsius um, but I wouldn't risk leaving it out. Now this one, I can't remember the name of, and let me see, White Cloud, um, for obvious reasons. The silver leaves are almost solid silver, and I've used this as sort of a plant that can bounce off of the Brunera over here. The coloration is so similar, that repetition through the border just helps pull your eye through and stop it looking so chaotic. Now this plant really, really thrives being moved outside in summer and pushes out some lovely big leaves. But as I say, this is growing in a pot and it will move back into the greenhouse for winter. But it is a shade loving plant. And if you're looking for interesting shade loving plants, really, really have a look at begonias because although they're not as hardy as begonia grandis, you can get so many leaf shapes and colors. Um, and if you grow them in pots and move them out, I like to call it house plants on holiday, your garden is just gonna be elevated. You're gonna have something really, really unusual uh, and a really colorful shade loving plant. Now, if you come up here, this is an oldie but a goodie. It's Fatsia japonica. This one, is a variegated fatsia, so fatsia japonica variegata. Now fatsias, for me, in zone 9b, are tough as old boots, and they will thrive and shrug off snow and ice, um, and they grow like mad. This variegated one doesn't grow as fast as the regular fatsia japonica, but it really, really does push out a lot of new growth each year. And you can grow some fatsias in sun, but I tell anyone who asks that fatsias are definitely happier in partial shade. Now I've used this one again because it's evergreen 
and it casts additional shade over these shade loving plants. When I moved into this garden, it was cooking in full sun all the time, but now we're getting a canopy and some bigger shrubs, I can really experiment with different plants that I can grow. So Fatsia is a fantastic option. I'm actually gonna take you over to another border now to show you a couple of slightly more unusual plants that are thriving in the shady conditions that I've got them growing in. But before we do, I just wanna take a minute to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now Skillshare is an amazing online community with thousands of classes. So if you're looking to make a career pivot like I did, or looking to learn a new skill, then joining Skillshare could be the thing for you. And they've actually included a one month free trial if you click the link below in the video description. And one course on there that I found particularly useful at the moment is the Self Care Playbook by John Van Ness. There are so many tips there that have helped me manage my stress levels and just prioritize what I actually need. Now, I know gardening is supposed to be relaxing and it 100% is, but since I turned it into a business, sometimes I can find myself getting overwhelmed. So by following some of the tips in the self-care playbook course on Skillshare, it's really helping me just manage my workload and my life and just get my internal balance much better. And as I said, the first 1,000 people to use the link will get a free trial of Skillshare. Right, let's get on with the video. This mass of jungly foliage is what started out as my jungle border and it's really living up to its name. Everything has grown like mad and it really needs to be controlled a bit more, but I love the plants too much to give them too hard a chop. So let's have a look at some of the plants I've got growing in this border in the lower layers that are thriving in shady conditions. This plant was completely new to me this year. It's in the nettle family. It's got these beautiful silver markings through the leaf and the leaves that feature almost puckered centers with a gorgeous, really defined serration. Now this is a pilea. And that's a genus of plants you more commonly see, see sold as houseplants. This is Pilea matsudai and a cultivar called Taiwan silver on account of these silver markings. And as I say, this is the first time I've grown it in my garden this year. And it is a fantastic plant. It grows so fast and it can get quite tall. Now, I think this one wouldn't have got quite so leggy if it wasn't fighting for light in amongst this densely planted jungle border. But you can see this must be, let's say 60 centimeters high, 60, 70 centimeters, um, which is, I don't know, two foot-ish. So it's a really cool foliage plant and completely hardy. Now, I have taken cuttings as a backup, but I'm gonna leave this pilea out in the winter months, but I have been told and assured that it is completely hardy. And this is one of my favorite foliage plants in the garden this year. Now these are hiding underneath another new foliage plant for me, the size of this leaf. This is Selenum quitoensi, which is one of those spiky leaved selenums. Now this is actually under quite a bit of shade because of the sugar cane, which is towering above it. And it's still pushing out loads of leaves and some gigantic leaves. So I wasn't actually planning to feature this in the video, but you can see how well it's doing under shade. So perhaps this is one you can give a go. I grew this from seed this spring and it grows really quickly. Um, and I often sell the seeds for this on the online shop. So go and check it out, Selenum quitoensi. And here's another Impatiens. This is Impatiens flanaganii, which is quite a thick stemmed Impatiens with huge typical Impatiens leaves that has pink flowers. Now this one gets quite a bit more sun, um, but it is still a plant that will thrive in shade. Now unfortunately mine's not in flower yet, so I'll show you some flowers from other pictures that I've taken elsewhere. But this is a really great plant for shade. And I've just seen, just behind me, there are a couple of other ferns that I'd recommend growing. 
This is a Splenium scolopendrium, which is the British native heart's tongue fern, but you can get different cultivars. Um, there's one called Hurricane that has like a spiral of leaves that looks really nice and I'd like to add to my garden. Um, but I like growing native plants where I can in amongst my exotics, so it makes the garden a place that's home to so much of the native wildlife as well. And you've got this gigantic fern, which is Woodwardia radicans, or the giant European chain fern. Now, I've really got this planted in the wrong spot because it is covering up everything else that is growing in this bed, but I haven't got the heart to dig it out and move it. And even if I did, I don't have the space to put it anywhere else. And so for the time being, I cut off any unwanted leaves and I leave one or two leaves in, in situ. Um, but because it's evergreen, it's great for winter interest and it's shade loving. So definitely one to give a go if you can find them. I tend to have more of these for sale in the shop in spring after I've been propagating from my stock plants. Hopefully you found some plants in this video that you're inspired to grow in your own garden. Now, if you found the video helpful, please hit the subscribe button. It's the easiest way to support this channel. And feel free to check out all my other videos. I've got garden tips and tours and check out my plant and seed shop. Um, I sell across the UK and ship plants all over the place. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video.